Hi, I am Dr. Vaibhav Deraje. I am a consultant craniofacial and plastic surgeon, Bangalore. Craniosynostosis can be either non-syndromic craniosynostosis or syndromic craniosynostosis. Now, one such common syndrome is something called as Cruzon syndrome. Now, Cruzon syndrome is slightly different compared to all other syndromes in craniosynostosis. As I mentioned previously, probably regarding Apert syndrome, where Apert syndrome babies have also deformities of the hand as well. But in Cruzon syndrome, babies only have craniofacial deformities. They don't have any problems in the hand. Now, in Cruzon syndrome, more than one growth plates in the brain or the skull is fused. So that causes abnormally shaped head that can cause raised intracranial pressure also very often and also that causes protrusion of the eyeballs. These babies can have flatness in the mid face. These babies can have obstructive sleep apnea. They can have an abnormal bite as we commonly call it as a class 3 malocclusion. Now all these problems can be there in Cruzon syndrome. Now treatment of Cruzon syndrome or for that matter any syndrome in craniosynostosis is a multidisciplinary approach and certain things have to be done at the right time going forward. Now we encourage people to come to us as early as possible so that the assessment can be made. Usually a baseline CT scan and a baseline MRI is done some babies can have brain anomalies as well so that's why we need an mri scan every child gets an ophthalmological examination an eye checkup just to rule out any raise in the pressure in the brain as well now this child is seen by a plastic surgeon by a neurosurgeon by an eye specialist by our nurses by our psychiatrists and our pediatric anesthetists now Usually most of the children who have raised intracranial pressure will require some sort of skull expansion in the first year of life. They also might require something that I mentioned called as fronto orbital advancement procedure as well to improve the forehead position and also the protruding eye sockets and also to increase the space in the brain in the first year of life. Some children might also require a mid face advancement as I mentioned to improve the airway and to improve any problems some children might have with obstructive sleep apnea. They have to be on continuous follow up usually we follow up these babies every three months in the first year of life every six months in the second year of life and yearly checkup is required until the child becomes an adult. These procedures might require more than one procedure. Usually it has been our experience that at least two to three procedures might be required in syndromic craniosynostosis, especially Cruzon syndrome.